What percentage of your patients obtain this magical MRD negativity set? So I, I think, um, you know, if, if you talk about with induction therapy, the number is probably going to be um, in the 10 or 15 percent range, not more than that. Post-transplant, maybe you can push that number uh, up to 25 or 30 percent range. But again, you know, which which metrics are we using to measure MRD negativity? Well, tell us what you're doing. <laughs> so we're we're utilizing um, MRD flow and sequencing um, uh, both methodologies. Um, uh, depends on on what kind of uh, study you're doing, and and both have merits. Uh, my my one concern with MRD um, threshold is even. Uh, at the 10 to the minus 6 um, um, uh, power, what is uh, the chance that the patient may be MRD positive at 10 to the minus 7 or 10 to the minus 8? So I'm, I'm, I'm still on the fence with, with that definition. All right. I mean, just for the audience to catch up with us here, minimal residual disease, um, pros and cons, Tom? You know, so I, the first and foremost thing is really what is our definition? Are we calling MRD negativity? 10 to the minus 4 or 10 to the minus 5 or 10 to the minus 6. And certainly, you know, more patients achieve the 10 to the minus 4. I think um, the IMWG criteria is 10 to the minus 5th. But in fact, if you take the randomized Dr. Atal study, the randomized study with RVD uh, delayed transplant versus RVD upfront transplant, uh, the patients that achieved MRD negativity in that study, it was 10 to the minus 4th. And those patients that achieved MRD negativity had uh, a, a prolonged survival with a very low hazard ratio of 0.34. And that was just published in New England Journal of Medicine. So uh, in my mind, I think it's a threshold effect. And I think we can use any one of those numbers, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, but we have to agree on which one we're going to use in clinical trials and what, going what's, forward. What's the clinical trial evidence that this is a useful endpoint, Sagar? Do you want to, I guess you mentioned one trial already, but what in the transplant setting? I mean, I, I think, you know, it's really important as we talk about MRD as an endpoint of therapy that we realize that what we know from clinical trial data right now is that people that achieve an MRD negative complete remission by any metric, whether it's minus 4, minus 5, or minus 6, their outcomes are better than if they don't, PFS and OS. But that's a prognostic indicator, and I think we really need the trials that are ongoing now to know how to use that data to manipulate, change, or talk about duration of therapy. So, so there are two technologies to do this, flow cytometry, which the Europeans have, have promoted, and then there's next generation sequencing, which I think some of us are using here in, in the United States. Uh, Ivan, are you doing MRD testing at We Hopkins? are. We've been using next generation sequencing. Uh -huh. And tell uh, us about that. Are you happy with that? What's yeah, I mean, I think there's obviously there's pros and cons to both of them. I think one of the benefit of next gen sequencing is that um, it doesn't require a fresh sample. Uh, you could go back to the original sample to actually identify the clones and it's uniform. I mean, there's a lot of variability with flow cytometry that's operator dependent, uh, antibody panel dependent, and, and many other things. The one thing we found useful about flow, which I don't think we're very good at in my institution yet, but we're getting better at, is you do get the result back in 24 hours. That's true. Yes. That's, yeah. So yeah. that's, a, that's nice. a benefit yeah. of that, <laughs> absolutely. And as I said, I mean, there's pros and cons. I mean, I think, I, I think though, in terms of trying to um, uh, form a framework within which to ultimately have therapeutic uh, decisions, um, flow offers a little bit more complexity than next-gen right. sequencing right. would. And That's flow may have a role in things like immune profiling, immune surveillance, all those kinds of things. Right. But it doesn't need to be to the depth and complication that I think flow for MRD does, whereas I think sequencing is just so much easier. And, and, the and, and, the and, very and, first person that I, I saw present was your colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Wolf. Wolf um, so you guys have been sort of pioneers in, in adopting this clinically. How's your experience going with it? When do you use it? We've probably been using it for two years now, and we use next generation sequencing uh, through adaptive. Um, and we use it uh, really as a prognostic marker more than anything else. I don't think any clinical decisions can be made at the current time. Would you escalate or de-escalate therapy based on the result? What it does, I think, is when you have somebody that's getting maintenance therapy and they're MRD negative and they're having toxicity to their maintenance therapy and the patient understands that I'm MRD negative, so can't I stop my yeah, maintenance therapy? Right. It becomes a little bit of a tricky slope. And you are, you're also in this, um, in this new realm that, oh, they are MRD negative. Maybe I should stop their maintenance-based right. therapy. So, in fact, if patients are uh, MRD negative, negative, we're probably more likely to stop their maintenance therapy. Now, I will say that for, for um, 
you know, if we're going to accept this globally, not just in clinical trials, I think flow cytometry, in fact, may be an easier test for the local guys to order and get back in 24 hours, rather than them getting back a week later or two weeks later, et cetera. Um, so but these are patients that are in CR, so why does it matter if you get it back in a day or in 10 days? I, I, guess, I guess it really doesn't um, matter a day or two days. But they, they've, they're, I think they're used to seeing flow cytometry reports, where they're not used to seeing these, these um, next-gen sequencing reports. Um, so we'll have to see. In, in addition, you, know, you don't have to have, you don't have to go back to the ori original bone marrow biopsy to get the clone for flow cytometry. You can do it at any point during their therapy. So I have, um, I have uh, kind of uh, split feelings on whether it's going to be next generation sequencing or whether it's going to be flow does, does down the road. Does it have to be one, one or the other? I, I, no. I think it's yeah. a false no. argument. No. So we have MRD flow, which is a variable sensitivity, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. You have that when you see the patient. If somebody's negative, you can consider sending it off um, for a, a sequencing. Good point. Bench. What, what do we really tell? Like what point. do we tell? That's good advice, I think. What do we tell community doctors about this? Is it something they should be doing? It's premature. Watch the space. What's the story here? I think that you know it's too premature for for clinical ap application outside of clinical trials right now. But you know that there's wealth of data now, you know, showing that MRD negativity does correlate with better survival outcomes. So I think that's the message. Uh, it's not ready for prime time, but but it's coming.